problem 8.3-2. The state of strain at a point in a gear has components. Normal strain in the x direction is 90 times 10 to the negative 6. Normal strain in the y direction is negative 60 times 10 to the negative 6. And shear strain is equal to 120 times 10 to the negative 6. That's shear strain in the xy plane. Using more circle, determine the principal strains and the associated angle of rotation. Also find the maximum in-plane shear strain and the associated angle of rotation. This is the same problem we did for 8.3-1, except this time we're going to use more circle. The first thing I'm going to do is find where the center of my circle is located. And I'm going to use this equation here for the center of the circle. It's the average of the normal strains. And uh, as you see, I have dropped the uh, 10 times 10 to the negative 6th on the values. I will put them back on when we're done. This will just make computation easier. So we get for the center of our circle our normal strain, epsilon, is, e is equal to negative 35. Let's go ahead and draw our axes. OK, I've drawn my axes. I have my normal strains here on the horizontal axis, and my shear strains on the vertical axis. And uh, normal strains is positive to the right, shear strain positive downward. And note that the axis is actually the sh shear strain divided by 2. That's necessary when using more circle for plane strain transformation. Now I've plotted the center of my circle. Its value is epsilon is equal to negative 35. And it's right on the uh, epsilon line, which means gamma is 0 there at the center. Now the next step is to plot the x face. That's the x face of, uh, of the uh, point. So the x face will have a uh, epsilon x value of 90 and a gamma xy value of 120 divided by 2, so 60. Next I'm going to plot the y face of the element. That'll have a uh, normal strain, epsilon y, of negative 160 and negative gamma xy value uh, uh, divided by 2 of negative 60. Plotting the y face, uh, we see it's uh, directly opposite the x face about the center point, which uh, is what we expect since these are two points on a circle 180 degrees apart. So this line and these two points represent our element. Now I'd like to find what the radius of our circle is going to be, and that's the distance from the center point to either the y face or the x face. I'm going to choose the x face. And you can see there's a uh, right triangle here. And I know the two side lengths. Uh, this short side is 60. That was gamma xy divided by 2. And the long side is, uh, is 90. That's epsilon x. Uh, also added to that the distance to the center, 35. So we have a long side dimension of 125. And uh, using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find that the radius is equal to 138.7. And using that radius, I can go uh, to the right of the center point, uh, 138.7. And I will end up at 103.7. I can also go from the center left, uh, the radius, and I will end up at negative 173.7. I can go from the center up. That'll put me at uh, a value uh, of these coordinates here. And I can go from the center down, and it'll put me at these coordinates here. Now I have plotted six points on my circle and the center of circle. So now I'm going to draw my Moore's circle. So here's my Moore's circle in red. It's about the best I can do without a compass. I recommend you use one when you draw your Moore's circle. But uh, we can see some important things here. This point we're on the far uh, right end of our circle is uh, our principal strain, epsilon 1. I will include the times 10 to the negative 6. Here on the left side of the circle is our epsilon 2. That's equal to negative 173.7 times 10 to the negative 6. Here at the bottom of the circle, that's our maximum in-plane shear strain divided by 2. It's 138.7. Our maximum in-plane shear strain 
is 2 multiplied by 138.7 gives us 277.4 times 10 to the negative 6th. Remember ring 2 multiply the value by 2 is a easy point to make a mistake. Now to find our rotation angles, this point right here represents our x face and if we are going to rotate it up to this point of our principal stress then the angle of rotation will be shown as that and we'll call it 2 theta p because angles on Mohr's circle are double what they are in reality. We can find what this angle is since we know these uh, side lengths of this right triangle that we use to find the radius and we can find the angle 2 theta p that's the tangent inverse of the opposite side which was 60 divided by the adjacent side which is 125 that gives us a value of 25.64 degrees divided by 2 theta p is 12.82 degrees and the rotation angle to move the x face to the maximum in-plane uh, shear strain condition is this angle here we'll call it 2 theta s and we can find 2 theta s the angle by using the same dimensions of the right triangle. Uh, we just inverted them. Gives us 64.36 degrees. Divide it by 2 to get theta s, 32.18 degrees. And notice that angle is in the clockwise direction, whereas theta p is in the counterclockwise direction. And we're done.